and good morning once again. I was actually a little scared. What should I speak on this topic called fears and phobias? And then I said that if I get scared, then how will I help you to overcome your uh, fears, right? So I decided that I will do my preparation as much as I can, which I always make it a point to do. And I will just, you know, give you a very clear picture on how and what happens and how these things uh, uh, work. Let me give you an example. You will find, you can check out with uh, friends of yours, you know, who uh, need to, let's say, go by aircraft, who need to fly. You will find that there are so many people who are scared of flying. Yeah, I have to go by flight to such and such place. I'm getting a little scared. You know, airplane goes up 30,000 feet into the air. Crashes can take place. Anything can uh, happen. You ask the same person, do you drive a vehicle, four-wheeler, two-wheeler, whatever it is? Yes, I do. Every day, yes, I do. You go and roaming around. Do you get scared? No. Yeah, I know these days traffic in the city is bad and I have to be a little careful but uh, I don't uh, you know uh, get scared now I'll tell you the uh, facts the um, you know chances of a flight passenger in an airline dying in the air is one in 2.2 million 2.2 million people fly and one of them you know, dies. On the other uh, uh, hand, 125 Americans die every day in road accidents. And I'm sure even in India, the numbers are even much larger. Many of them don't even get recorded. Why am I telling you this? Just to help you understand that the fears that we have, the phobias that we have, the anxieties that we have are not conforming to facts, to realities. These are all emotions. Fear is an emotion. Phobia is an emotion. Anxiety is an emotion. And emotions do not go by logic. Yet the fact remains that while emotions, as I have been repeating many, many times, emotions are a consequence of thought. The moment I think, oh, I have to fly all the way to London to meet so and so. Oh, it's such a long flight. Anything can happen. And you know, you have to go over the ocean where for thousands of miles there is no land. There's no place where even if a plane uh, you know, develops some problem, it cannot even uh, land somewhere because it's just the sea. All this, now my thoughts are evolving. What do these thoughts lead to? They lead to certain emotions. Let's say anxiety. What will happen if there is a plane crash? Should I do this or not? Should I avoid traveling? So these are the type of you know emotions that uh, come in. And like I said, these emotions, while they come because of our thoughts, they can be managed. You cannot avoid, avoid emotions. If I'm afraid, I'm afraid. Let's say I've got a fear of dogs. I step out on the road. And 50 feet away, there's a dog barking at somebody else. But the moment I hear that dog and I see him from far away, that fear immediately comes up, right? The question now is, do I have to suffer from that fear? Or can I do something to manage that fear? All emotions can be managed, remember. In fact, as I have told so many times earlier, emotional intelligence EQ, emotional quotient, governs 70, 80%, 90% of our well-being, happiness, fulfillment, and success in life. And the first two pillars of emotional intelligence are self-awareness, becoming aware. Am I even aware that I am scared of this? I am jealous of so and so. I have developed this phobia of dogs. I have this anxiety, you know, my child is going out alone. 
how what will happen to him or her how will things be all these yeah, i first have to become aware of it many of us are in denial remember that so once i become aware of it the second pillar of emotional intelligence is managing those emotions so today i'm going to talk to you about managing these three very important emotions in fact fear if you take is generally recognized by behavioral scientists as one of the four basic emotions happiness sadness anger and fear though it is not universal there are controversies there are discussions on it but many 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 behavioral scientists agree that these four are definitely very prime and very basic emotions and a lot of other emotions are combinations or extensions of these emotions and that is the reason why i chose this topic today because it has a lot of significance in that okay now what is uh, uh, fear let's be very clear before i even talk about how to deal with the uh, uh, fear it's an emotional uh, state in the presence or in anticipation of some dangerous stimulus something is dangerous something is bad it is either there right in front of me or i feel that it is going to be there and it is characterized by a feeling of extreme agitation you know we develop that fight or flight syndrome either attack or run away from there that is what fear does uh, to uh, us and fear can be against an object a person i'm very scared of this man or this woman it can be fear of an event i'm scared of exams i'm scared of this i'm scared of uh, that a war may break out it is very often aggravated if it is unknown start with something very basic you have a small child at home you have a bedroom on the first floor you have left your phone or your pen or something in the bedroom and you tell this little one go up you know on the table next to my bed there is this phone is kept there bring it down the child goes halfway up the steps comes running down ma it is very dark over there i'm getting scared now it is your own bedroom within your own house the main door is locked the whole family is there at home but just because it is dark the child says i don't want to go you get up go near the stairs put on the light and say now you go and happily he goes gets the the thing you wanted and comes back uh, with it it starts from something as simple as that going on to a lot of things which are in the unknown uh, realm like i said for example dogs i've never been bitten by a dog and nothing bad has happened to me but i have never had a pet dog i've never interacted with the uh, dogs so when i hear a dog barking far away when i look at a dog i start getting scared for all you know the dog may come wagging his uh, tail and come and lick me or nuzzle me and be very happy with uh, me i don't know so this is what i want you to understand about fear before i uh, talk about how do we overcome uh, it now fears when they sort of start getting into certain brackets certain things which i am eventually inevitably all the time scared of one is as i told you being scared when i see a dog across the road the other is to be sitting at home and a friend calls me and says why don't you come over to my house tomorrow and i say yes and suddenly the thought strikes me after i put down the phone does he have a dog if i go to his house will i have to face the uh, dog there is no dog there is no threat yet the fear has already come up now that is what we call as you know a phobia like i told you it could be a phobia for uh, you know uh, darkness it could be a phobia of uh, crowded places it could be a phobia of uh, new uh, uh, places there are innumerable phobia phobia of fly, uh, flying in an uh, um, aircraft so many of us if we do not manage our emotions particularly these emotions like fears and anxiety 
it can lead to phobias. And once it becomes a phobia, it becomes extremely difficult to undo it. The other uh, thing which I wanted to connect up with uh, this first was fear, leading on to phobias. The other thing that I wanted to talk about, anxiety. I have a very interesting definition of anxiety. Anxiety is the interest that you pay on a loan which you have not taken. You have not taken the loan, but you are paying interest. There is no threat. Fear is about a threat. There is a dog across the road. Supposing he comes running and supposing he bites me. That is fear. But anxiety quite often is about something which may happen. Possibly that may uh, happen. I have no logical answers. I have no rational thoughts about it. But this may happen. What will happen if I go to Chennai and there is a tsunami there? What will happen if I go to Haridwar and there is an earthquake there? There is no such indication. There is no such news or anything like that. But I develop that uh, anxiety. There are a lot of reasons why we develop anxieties. It starts with childhood, starts with some negative experiences which are totally unconnected to this and then it moves on to these uh, things. I'm not going in so much today into the cause of it, but I also want you to know that if you're the type of person who develops anxiety, if, if it is likely to happen, what if this doesn't work? What if despite all my studies, I still fail in the exam? What if I go to my boss and talk nicely and give my presentation, if he still gets very angry with me and says, no, I don't like this, or he throws me out or something. These are the type of anxieties which can actually ruin lives. It's a very, very destructive uh, emotion because at least fear, like I told you, can be dealt with there and then. I can request a friend of uh, mine, can you go and please tie up that dog? Or can I get into your vehicle and move away because I don't want to walk across that distance because that dog is somewhere there. It may come chasing me. Or can I get back into my house and lock the door and wait for that dog to move away from there and then go? You see, there are ways and means of tackling it. But like I said, if I have anxiety of what may happen, then nobody can help me. If I say that I don't want to go to any friend's house because a friend may have a dog and that dog may be ferocious and that dog may bite me. You understand what I'm saying? That is the reason why I want you to be very, very particular of development of anxieties, which, as I said, can also you know, lead to a lot of phobias. And phobias can sometimes get so bad that you need professional help to get out of it. it. It can't be done just by the help of some friend or counselor or somebody. Sometimes it really gets uh, uh, bad when people develop uh, uh, phobias. They, their whole life can be uh, destroyed because of uh, uh, that. So taking all that into account, now let me come back to the original point, which is that of fears. So if you know, I have fears and everybody has fears. Remember that if in case there is somebody out there who says, I do not fear anything. I am never afraid. You're fooling yourself. You know something, even in military training, I've had the privilege of working with both army and air force officers since many, many years. One of the things that is taught to a military official is that don't aim for a situation where you say, I do not have fears. When you are facing the enemy, when you are facing a very difficult situation, if there is that little pinch in your heart, some little glitch that makes you, you know, afraid, you know what? It will help you to take rational decisions. 
it will help you to organize yourself and not do something foolhardy supposing there is a commander who has claims he has no fears let a thousand enemy come with tanks and bullets and rockets i don't care what will happen he will lead his men into that confrontation and so many of his men may die because of the fact that he claimed that he does not have fear but if he has a little bit of fear he will say hold on let's not advance too fast let's send, send somebody to check out how many people there are let's wait for our tanks to come behind us so that they can protect us and then move on all that comes out of uh, fear so there is no question of either you know coming to a situation where i do not have fear take something very simple in the city of bangalore for example of late we've been having so many instances of young kids many of them under age who get on to a bike a motorcycle or a scooter and three of them four of them sometimes are sitting on it and doing what they call as wheelies that means they raise the front wheel of the uh, bike and they go zooming ahead there have been innumerable accidents there have been deaths and they have been caught by the police and their parents have been jailed the vehicle has been confiscated left right and center that is uh, happening but somewhere along the line we don't seem to be controlling it the number of instances are not coming down despite so much of police patrolling so much of threats and this and that why because these children feel that i have nothing to fear so many of them see there are some children who die there are some children who become maimed for life if they have a spinal injury they are paralyzed life long imagine a 15 year old youngster cannot walk uh, for the rest of his life forget about wheelies and bikes and all these uh, things and this is reality these are not like i told you it's not like a, you know being afraid of dying in an air crash these are very 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 strong realities so while you take that into account and if you are the type who's willing to admit that yes i do have fears i'm as human as anybody else certain areas i am very courageous i even take a little bit of risk and i move on and i do whatever is needed certain areas where i am not very comfortable i do have some fears okay so what do we do in terms of overcoming fears once you make a list and say this is what i am afraid of how do you overcome those fears so i asked anish to make a quick uh, you know presentation uh, for all of us thereby i have listed down these nine basic points how to overcome your fears starting with what i was telling you just now identify all your fears and categorize them very strong average and mild and you you know something interesting work on the mild ones first don't take up the strong ones they are very difficult to overcome and because you are not being able to overcome your motivation will go down you try for some time you'll say no it's not happening nothing is happening so take up very mild fears first i'm a little scared of cats also along with dogs because sometimes you know that cat does and comes with the um, the claws open and i get a little scared not so much as dogs but i am afraid okay let me start with those okay so identify all your fears and categorize them then then what you need to uh, uh, do is write down when you developed that fear and whether there was any trigger when you developed that fear and whether there was any trigger what triggered it like i said if there is a you know important event i was bitten by a dog from that time onwards i developed fear of dogs or i was not bitten by a dog but i was told that my cousin who lives in such and such a place he was bitten by a dog and then he had to take so many injections and he was in so much pain and this and that so that created it 
So write down when you developed the fear and whether there was any trigger. Now, how significant is the trigger? That's a question that comes to mind. One cousin of mine was bitten or even I was bitten. But you know how many stray dogs there are in our country? Six crores. I don't even know six people who were bitten by dogs. So what does it mean? Five crore, 99 lakhs, 99,990 people, dogs, have not bitten anybody. That is how we start the process of rationalizing. Okay? If nothing has happened to you, but you still have a fear, check whether it is because somebody else has drilled it into you, particularly in childhood. You'll be amazed at the fears and phobias and anxieties that we developed because of what our elders told us. It's very sad, but many, many elders, just to protect the child, instill fear into the child. Don't talk to strangers. If somebody offers you a chocolate or something, don't take it. Fine, you're trying to protect the uh, child. But the same adults have not told why I said it. And the interesting thing is, as the child grows up and is capable of looking after himself or herself, the same adult does not say, when you were very small, I used to tell you, don't talk to adults. I mean, to strangers. Now that you're a little older and you can take care and you can differentiate between what to talk and whom to talk, that same rule does not apply to you. You can talk to strangers. Hardly any adult takes the trouble to do that. So you know what happens in the subconscious mind. I grow up carrying that indoctrination or that message which was given to me by a very significant adult, my own parent, my teacher, my grandfather, whoever had told me that. So based on that, what happens is, that is why I've given on this slide, if nothing bad happened and I still have a fear, check whether it was because somebody pushed that thought into your mind, created that fear in your mind. And with that, we start off with rationalizing. Rationalize what are the chances that the bad thing will actually happen. Whether your aircraft will plunge into the Atlantic Ocean. Whether that dog will suddenly leave everybody else and come running all down the road and come and bite you and go away. How often have you even seen that happening? Forget about being bitten by a dog. How often have you seen dogs going and biting another human being and going away or most often they are barking at something which is going past or they are barking at another dog or whatever it may be. So if you understand, if you are able to rationalize, what are the chances that that bad thing will actually you know, happen? I even do it with students who get exam anxiety, for example. No, no, I think I will fail. I think I will not get selected. I don't think I will get admission. I don't think I will uh, pass. Rationalize. I ask a student, for example, who's getting very, very scared of exams. Okay, you are going to appear for this paper where the maximum marks are 100, right? Okay. What do you think are the chances that you will score 0 out of 100? <laughs> Obviously, I won't score 0. Fine. What are the chances that you'll score 10 out of 100? No, no, I, I won't do that. Okay, 20 out of 100? No, 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 even that much, that is too low. 30 out of 100? No, unless I really mess it up, I don't think it will go down to 30. 40 out of uh, 100? 50 out of uh, 100? Yes, sir, sometimes I get scared. I won't even get a first class. I may get only 50%. Okay. But you are sure you will get 50, right? Yes, of course, uh, 40, 50, definitely. Whatever happens, I think. Uh, so, it is like you are going for batting. With 50 runs to your credit already on the scoreboard. Now, what do you have to do? You have to start hitting out for 51 runs, 55 runs, 60 runs, 100 runs. Look at it in the same way. So that's what I meant by saying you rationalize. What are the chances that a bad thing will actually happen? If you sit down and look at statistics, if you look down and think of what are the ways in which you have protected um, yourself, 
you will realize that the chances are very, very, very low. And if it is like that, it is almost like a lottery. Can you buy a lottery ticket and say the first price is 10 crores? If I win this lottery ticket, I will never have to earn in my life. 10 crores will be enough for me to take care of me for the rest of my life. So I will stop studying, I will stop earning, I will stop everything else because I bought a lottery ticket. People will laugh at you, isn't it? They will know that you are being very irrational because you are presuming that one lottery ticket will get you that 10 crores. Exactly the reverse applies over here. What are the chances that you will get into this, this, this trouble? What are the chances you will have an accident? What are the chances that your loved one will leave you and go away? If you rationalize, you'll realize that many of these fears are unfounded or they are exaggerated. Then let us list out alternatives. If it does happen, how will you deal with it? Okay, in that extreme case, that dog comes and bites you. What will happen? Will you die out of dog bite? No, nobody dies the moment a dog comes and bites you. So what do you have to do? I will go to a doctor. Do you know any doctor? Yes, I know. I have got a friend. He's got a hospital nearby. This, this, this. I can go to him. Yes. In fact, you can make a call to the doctor saying that I've been bitten by a dog. I'm coming over to your hospital. Please tell me, uh, do whatever has to be uh, done. Once you do that, what will uh, happen? The doctor will say you will require this, this, this injections or something, anti-rabies and all that. Once you have taken that, then everything will be fine. So the doctor gives you that one, two, three, whatever the number of injections and all that. It's a little painful. It will you know, be a little inconvenient. You have to go back for a number of uh, injections. After that, what will happen? That you are not only 100% safe, but even if another dog comes in, it will happen to Heard that a friend of mine had happened and whatever these things had um, happened. Talk it over with a trusted friend and an elder, an expert. Like I said, if it's a question of dog bite, there are doctors. You can talk to them. You have been bitten by um, a dog. You were scared of flying. Talk to somebody who knows something about aviation and about flights and this and that. And he'll tell you that the chances are something like 1 in 2.2 million that you will die in a plane crash. This is how you need to reinforce it back. And then expose yourself in a similar situation at a very basic and small level. Get a tiny little puppy and start playing with it so that you overcome the uh, fear of uh, dogs. Take a short flight somewhere. Okay, I have to go and meet my friend in Hubli. Now, uh, you know, we have these uh, uh, plane uh, flights are available. They are not very expensive. Normally, I would have gone by train. Okay, this time, let me just go by plane and uh, see how it is. Within 45 minutes, I will be there. And if nothing happens to me, I have taken that one step forward. So expose yourself to a similar situation at a very basic and small level and check out your emotions. That is... Initially, I was very scared, but when I stepped out of the aircraft at the other end of the flight, I realized that nothing happened. It was so safe. In fact, I stopped there and I asked some one person who was standing there, how many accidents have you had in this Ovali airport? And he will say, no, never. From the time that airport started, we have never had an accident. That gets reinforced. Right? Take responsibility. That is very important. You know, maximum fears are among people who, as they say, pass the buck. They expect others to do things for uh, uh, them. So, if the more you take responsibility, the lesser are the chances that fear, anxiety or phobias will pull you down. 
And the last point in this sequence is reward yourself every time you overcome even slightly. I went to a friend's house where there was a tiny little dog and I petted him. I put my hand and stroked him and he wagged his tail and he was friendly with me. I actually took a flight from Bangalore to Hubali, landed there comfortably, safely. Nothing happened to me, nothing happened to my co-passenger, nothing happened to the 100 flights which went to Hubali before uh, uh, me. So reward yourself. Give yourself positive strokes. Pamper yourself and say, yes, I have made that one step forward towards you know, getting over this fear, this phobias, this anxieties, whatever it may be. So as I said, these are some very basic, very simple pointers as to how you can overcome the fears. We can all do it. I repeat again, every emotion is a consequence of thoughts. Some emotions can be very disturbing and they can lead to a lot of you know, constraints on your life. But every emotion can be managed through proper steps, through proper guidance, and through a lot of patience. So with that, I need my one minute break and I'll leave you in the good hands of Seema. Hello once again. So uh, yeah, look at this bright, colorful poster here, Emofi. We've been talking about it. We've been working uh, on it. In fact, uh, uh, we are getting a lot of uh, young volunteers uh, from different colleges uh, across Bangalore. So um, it's a you know nice and bustling fest. Just look at the uh, details. It's uh, put up there. So basically, we'll have uh, um, you know different different counters. We'll have. Uh, you know, psychological testing, we'll have personal counseling, career counseling, and uh, many such stalls outside our DCS students, our Banjarites, have, uh, are going to be putting up uh, food stalls. So it's going to be really a fest, a festival. Please come and join us. This is going to be on 25th of June. So uh, that is something which we are all uh, working on. In fact, uh, any uh, young college, uh, you know, uh, 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 youngster wants to participate, be a volunteer let us know. So this is what we are doing. This is what's uh, coming up next. And of course, our Diploma in Counseling Skills program. This is the program, which uh, is an annual program. Twice a week, you have to come here for your classes. Excellent. Ali was talking about, you know, these different phobias, fears and uh, stuff like that. And many other things that you want to. Of course, we have free counseling, so you can come and talk to us. But if you really want to learn about all these aspects of human behavior, this is one fantastic program. So this is something and all the students who have already registered. They're coming here. We have something called as an IAQ, a very reflective questionnaire. So again, Banjara is also bustling with all these students coming and giving their IAQ. If you want to see what a DCS class or any class in Banjara looks like, what a talk, uh, you know, looks like. If you want to get a feel of it in uh, your physical, physically, you want to come here and do it. There are two talks which are coming up next week, right? One is the HH talk, which we do every third Thursday, right? So that is also a very interesting topic. It is on um, gossips and irrelevant talks. So Ali will be talking about this from 10 to 11. So please feel free to come, come by 9.45, come and settle in our classroom. And uh, this is a talk which is on 16th of uh, uh, June. And on 18th, we have another talk on what is the difference between a counselor and a friend. So that will be from 4 to 5.30. That is for our DCS students uh, this year, DCS 23 students. But anybody else also who wants to get a feel of, uh, you know, what a classroom is, what what exactly, what do we do here? What is psychology? You don't need a psychology background. But if you want to participate, you're most welcome. So do come over. A lot of things happening here. Check out our website for all our latest programs. So with that, I hand you over back to Ali. Thank you so much. With that, we come to the more interesting part, at least to me. 
because I get uh, fed up of listening to my own voice. So when I interact with people, when I find people giving some, uh, you know, nice inputs, doubts, discussion, disagreements also, that's what stimulates uh, me. And we start as usual with my very dear friend and student, Surekha Jagdale. He says, how can I replace that villain, my chatterbox, which is spinning all the fear with a loving internal friend? Yes, many of us have this chatterbox inside, which goes on threatening you, which goes on cautioning you. Don't cross the road. You have heavy traffic uh, uh, coming. Don't be, uh, be too trusting about people whom you meet. Anybody can cheat you. Don't do this, don't do that. What I want you to do is just the same steps which I you know, told you in the first half of the program. Tell this chatterbox, okay, now this is how I am going to deal with this uh, you know, situation. I agree. I'm thankful to you, dear chatterbox, that you are you know, reminding me or uh, you know, protecting me or whatever it is. But remember that at the same time, you're also scaring me. And you're preventing me from leading a normal uh, uh, life. Roshan says, many people are scared of water. Hence, they can never learn to swim. Are they not missing out on the best exercise? How do you overcome this uh, fear? The same steps as I told you, Roshan. And here, all the more, since it's an activity-based thing, sit in your uh, uh, bathroom with a big tub and put your feet inside it. Start with something as small as uh, that. Get yourself, if you want, you know, those uh, uh, rubber uh, uh, baby pools which are there. Put water into it and go and sit down in uh, that. Go to a beach and walk into water just up to your ankles, six inches of water. Stand there and feel those beautiful waves coming one after another. When you go to a swimming pool, don't go to the main pool, go to what is called as that, uh, you know, baby pool or whatever they have on one side, which is about two feet deep. Put on your swimming costume and get down into that. So the more you do this, this is done more extensively and scientifically in what we call as CBT, you know, cognitive behavior therapy or rational emotive behavior therapy, REBT, but you don't have to go so deep into it. You can just start off by getting into these sort of exercises. Slowly, gently, don't push yourself. That's the key to it. If you jump into deep water and if you start, you know, swallowing water or getting choked up or something, then you will run away from water all the time. Manjula says, I always have fear of insecurity, fear of loneliness, fear of death without completing my commitments. How do I overcome it? In fact, uh, Manjula and the other, I am into the third week of a three week workshop that I'm doing for some of our old students who have volunteered for it on enriching your life through death. Every day I'm sending them one simple small activity which reminds them of death, either their own or somebody else's. And I'm asking them for their responses. The more you start thinking about it and the more you start overcoming this fear of death, the better your life uh, becomes. I can go on talking about this uh, thing. It's one of my favorite uh, topics, but today is not the day for it. Similarly, you also men mentioned about loneliness. This is, as you know, I've been constantly for the last 20 years, I've been harping on this loneliness factor. Very few people take it uh, seriously. And just this morning, I was responding to one of my uh, counselors who had sent me a mail that if you can spend time in solitude, you will never be lonely. Solitude is the antidote for loneliness. If you enjoy your company, if you can be with yourself without any technology or gadget or screen, if you're sitting alone and watching uh, Netflix, then no, it doesn't apply. No gadgets, no electronics, no screen in front of you. Otherwise, you can do whatever you want. You do gardening, you listen to music, you paint, you cook, you do whatever you want. Entirely on your own. 
learn solitude and you will never have to worry about becoming lonely in life okay what was the other uh, uh, is fear a learned behavior yes gayatri fear is definitely a learned behavior if a mother is in the kitchen and is cooking and the flame of the gas is on the little toddler comes looks at the flame nice orange thing coming up like this looks so attractive that he wants to put his hand into it if mummy is not watching and if he brings his hand too close to the fire what happens his fingers get burnt now he knows he will not only be scared of fire he may probably be get scared of the kitchen itself he may think kitchen is a place where you get so much pain you got the point anything like that the child goes to the park and there are two three little bullies over there and they start pressurizing him ridiculing uh, uh, him teasing him he not only get scared of those three bullies he gets scared of the park as an extreme case he may get scared of going out anywhere in a public place so to that extent we have to be aware that fear is definitely a learned phenomenon now when you find somebody having these fears as i told you don't scold them don't ridicule them and say how silly what is there to be scared of parks what is there to be scared of this what is there to be scared of that go into the reason find out the same nine steps that i gave you roshan says my daughter in law has a phobia of flying with the result that she cannot make a trip to india with her family i have never seen my grandsons because of this please advise and give suggestions how best i can get her without anxiety and fear the same thing which i told you earlier uh, roshan ask her you know in a country like usa you even have those small little private air fields and you have these tiny micro light aircraft i have enjoyed in my younger days flying those uh, micro lights they are just tiny they are like flying motorcycles with a proper instructor and with somebody sitting there to take care she just goes off into that goes 50 feet 100 feet high up in the air takes her round in 2 minutes and comes back and lands now the point is that she has broken that barrier of going up into the sky even i would say go to a tall building 20 floors 50 floors whatever it is stand there and look out at the panoramic view slowly look down huh. when i look down i get scared yes you do get scared but you are safe in the building you have a solid parapet wall in front of you you're not in the air you're not in the aircraft look down and visualize that instead of a building supposing i was in an aircraft how would it have been like that you start slowly breaking if you tell her that you have to catch an international flight from usa to india or something she will never do it but we are losing time because of that fear or phobia her quality of life is going down she is restricting herself it's not just a question of coming to india there may be so many thing tomorrow you know there may be an emergency where she has to fly from one place to another and she won't be able to do it that's how we need to teach these people okay uh diksha says can we be born with it i don't think so i'm not a genetic expert and all that but uh, based on my experiences i don't think anybody is born with the fears like i gave you the example of the child coming into the kitchen most of our fears are learned uh, uh, fears the next is mamta my mother is scared to come out and mingle with anybody after she had health problem but now she is fine with health so now you know the trigger she had a health problem what did that lead to maybe it was you know she was in pain and she was lying down so she didn't want anybody to see her in that uh, um, condition maybe during that health problem i don't know what exactly the health issue is you can find out maybe she couldn't walk properly and she felt very embarrassed meeting people because she would have to take a stick or a walker and go and people would look at her uh, strangely whatever may have been the cause now that you have identified that this developed when she had a health problem identify the specifics of what fear came into her mind what happened and if she has overcome that like if she can walk now she is no longer bedridden or whatever it is encourage her slowly very small this thing 
come, we'll just go to our neighbor's house and come back. Or that vegetable vendor has come. You come, we'll cross the road and we'll go up till the vegetable. You are good at selecting vegetables. We will buy that. You just guide me which vegetable to buy. We'll buy that and we will come back. Like that, you have to keep exposing her to it, right? Okay, Kitty says, my seven-year-old daughter assumes situations and is developing fear. My husband is on treatment for OCD. She picking up these habits quite likely, Kitty. Because she sees her father having, you know what is OCD, all of you, I hope, obsessive compulsive disorder. That means if a person starts getting obsessed with certain thoughts, even that by itself would not have been very bad. But if it leads to compulsive behavior, a person gets obsessed with the thought that I may have left the gas open when I stepped out. And that can be disturbing. Yeah, it is disturbing, but a man can still manage with it. But if it turns into compulsion, which is, I have to leave my work, come running back to again check, unlock the house, go to the kitchen, again check whether I have locked, uh, I closed the gas or not. So the obsession is developing into a compulsion. Now, you know small children. At seven years of age, to that child, daddy is the hero. Daddy is the person who has to be emulated. Daddy can do no wrong. Whatever daddy does is the ideal thing to do. And we find daddy having this OCD behavior. That means he has these anxieties, he has this fear, he has these repetitive habits. So please go on explaining to the child at seven years, she will understand that, you know, daddy has this problem because of that. He does these repetitive things or he is scared of that, but you don't have to do it. Come, let's rationalize. Come, let's sit and talk about it. Diksha says, fear and anxiety. Is it something that one can be born with or genetic? I've just answered that question saying that while I'm not an expert in genetics, I have not come across any specific, you know, genetic reasons. I've not come across any authorized research on uh, that, that it happens uh, genetically. Most of the times when you find that grandfather has anxiety, father has anxiety and child has anxiety, my conclusion is that it, these are learned phenomena. You observe your grandfather, you observe your father, whoever, any significant uh, adult in your life, and you start copying. And that's why people give it this uh, you know, label of it being genetic. Ah, Noor Naveen says, I am very scared to come to any new location without help, as I think I get confused about the address, though it is easy to locate. Next time you have to go to a new location, Noor, go, struggle it out, bear that fear and that anxiety, what will happen, all those things. The moment you reach the place safely, take out a notebook or your phone's notepad and write down. Today, on 11th of June at 11.45 a.m., I managed to reach this new place which I had never been to. I only got confused for five or ten minutes where I took one or two wrong turns, but finally I did manage to reach the right uh, uh, place, put it on record and keep reading it. Next time you have to go to a new place, read whatever your experiences were of earlier and then start off on the thing. Uh, Krishnan says, when I catch some signs of my past bad experience, come to my activities few days, I have fear the same will happen again. Exactly. Is this normal? Yes, it is normal. It can uh, definitely happen because you had those bad experiences. Now your question, how do you empower myself to go beyond these fears and expect happier things? Do I have fear or just past results? Past results have developed that fear. And also remember that we are much more prone to thinking about negative things than positive things. That's a very interesting part. If you go to a new place, let us say, for some negotiation, some meeting, and there are 10 people there, nine people talk to you very nicely. They cooperate with you. They check out with you. They are very polite to you. One person is bad, rude, arrogant. Anyway, whatever has to do, you've done your work, you've finished the meeting, you come back home. If somebody asks you, 
How are the people whom you met in that meeting? Whom do you talk about? Not about those nine people. You talk only about that one person who was bad. Those nine people who are strangers, who had no reason to be good to you, they went out of the way, they were polite, they were helpful, they were smiling, they were welcoming. I ignore them. One person was bad and I focus on it. You got my point? The same thing happens with fears. One bad experience and like a video record, I keep playing it back again, 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 again. Oh my God, that time I had that accident, that time that person cheated me, that time this happened. And the same thing keeps going on. You have to overcome that, right? Then comes Roshan's comment again. In mental illness, there are a lot of insecurities and fears with the result that the surroundings are completely destroyed. When you don't receive help on time, then eventually the caregiver is very badly affected. I 100% agree with you, Roshan. Dealing with these type of situations only, as they say, no, the wearer knows where the uh, you know, shoe pinches. It is extremely difficult. All I can say is for those of us who have been very lucky that there is no mental illness in the family, let us reach out to other families, caregivers who are taking care of people with mental illness. Taking care of a person with physical illness, even if he's completely paralyzed and bedridden, is comparatively easier because it doesn't take a toll on your mental acumen, on your emotions. But you deal with a person with mental illness, it's extremely difficult. Rina says, what's the best mindfulness exercise you can do for pain management when you lose a loved one? That's a very elaborate uh, thing, Rina. There is, you know, from, right from Dr. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross uh, days, you know, the grieving process and how you work with it. I have worked extensively on that and I've made a revised list of that grieving process, which is for the Indian condition, because our grieving, our relationships are a little different from the Western uh, culture. So if you're interested in that, please send me an email on alikwaja50 at gmail.com. I'll send you those, you know, step-by-step -step process of how you go through that grieving process and how you can, uh, you know, deal uh, with it. You can write anything else that you want to. I will definitely reply. I reply to all the emails that come to me. Even if I'm a little busy, there may be a delay, but be assured that I will reply uh, to you. Okay. Mahua says, one of my sisters have fear, step out and join any job. What should she do? Exactly what I was telling you about swimming or about anything um, else. Let her not walk into a big corporate office and take up a job. She'll get so scared, she'll come back and she'll never go back again. Ask her to take up some small responsibility. Let her go to the nearby uh, temple or orphanage or some NGO or somewhere and say, can I come once in a week and help out over here? Would you like to give me some little responsibility of maintaining this register or something? So baby steps, slowly overcome, rationalize, tell yourself, did I do anything wrong? Did I get scolded? Did I get myself into trouble? No, I didn't. So I am capable. I will start moving into the next uh, step. Sridevi says, if fear isn't acknowledged, that the person keeps avoiding and not accepting the fear, how to deal with it? Slowly, gently tell the person, make the person aware it's okay to be scared. You see, some people are so macho that they want to deny it. I'm not scared of this. I can handle this. I have no issues with that. Sometimes the ego comes in between. Sometimes, whatever it may be, the reasons we will not go into that. But the point remains, when you have people who are not accepting their fears, very gently remind them and say, I am seeing how you are suffering because of this little fear or anxiety or whatever you're going through. I do understand that part of it is real and you have to deal with it. But denying it and trying to be that macho thing that I can handle anything and all that may cause you more harm in the coming days. So can you please take help? And then how, what, where we can always discuss it. You can go to a counselor, you can talk to anybody on that uh, thing, right? Ah, Saraf Saab, all the way from Maharashtra, is our regular viewer. I always welcome him into this Saturday program. He says fear is not hereditary. It gets developed in life. Exactly. That's what I was also uh, telling. 
that uh, you know we don't have to be scared we don't have to presume that no this is genetic or this is inbuilt into me i can't help it you know my father and grandfather also happened to uh, had it so therefore i have it nothing doing i can assure you that you can overcome there is no such thing as hereditary here that's a very easy way of surrendering to something and saying that you know i can't do this i can't walk because my leg has been amputated even a person whose leg has been amputated can still walk there are ways and means there are people who not only without uh, whose leg has been amputated who not only walk they run you have heard of these blade runners you know who uh, take part in international um, events and win prizes so what i'm saying is that always remember always focus on the one fact that the mind controls the body if you gain control over your mind by managing your emotions in the right manner even if your body is giving you trouble even if your body is having certain difficulties you there are always ways and means and this i am saying in this modern era where technology has taken so many advances i told you for example a person who's a paraplegic or an amputee the technology has done such wonders that they can lead normal lives they can walk they can run they can participate in anything that they want to i have friends who are completely blind i send them text messages and they immediately reply don't ask me how they uh, you know read the text i leave it to you catch hold of somebody who does not have vision and ask how do you do it very easy for uh, them today 10 years back all these facilities were not uh, uh, there so anything that needs to be looked into as long as you have that positive spirit as long as your mind is functional and your mind is having that positive spirit and you say yes i know it is difficult but there's a difference between difficult and impossible so as long as it is not impossible there's also that thing you know that they break up that <clears throat> impossible giving space i am possible so it can be broken up you have impossible in front of you just remove the i create a space create a space after m so it becomes i am possible these are small small things but this is what helps us to understand move on but it can happen only if you have that will power there are people to help we run a free counseling service all of you are aware any time anybody can get in touch walk into banjara if you are local and if you are nearby or call us up on phone or send us an email yes we are there we'll work on it we are not problem solvers and we are not uh, you know genies or magicians or something but yes two minds are always better than one maybe we can sit think discuss find out what needs to be uh, uh, done and also ensure that you do it at the right uh, in the right uh, way that's one of the reasons why we have this monthly third thursday uh, talk which is a classroom talk not a online um, session and this time you know coming thursday i picked up this uh, you know topic about uh, you know the uh, managing gossip irrelevant talks remember that fears anxieties get comprehended by irrelevant talks and gossips and with social media having taken over our lives it becomes even more i know of people who within minutes you know forward hundreds of messages and create so much of panic so much of fear they think the whole world is going to collapse because of what is uh, happening and then you find nothing like that happened life still you know moves uh, uh, on so these are some of the things which are so simple so basic so practical but then you will ask me that if it is so simple as that why can't why can't people do it why do people still get into trouble why do people still suffer so much because they ignore in physical health you are aware supposing i have a tooth problem and i just keep taking painkillers and i don't go to the dentist i go after 2 years what will my dentist tell me you have complicated it so much that now i will have to do an elaborate procedure 
I have a small, let's say, a heart problem. Very minor as of right now. Maybe with some medication and with some change in lifestyle, I could you know, get back to normalcy. But I ignore. I work more and more. I get more involved in my work and all these things. At one fine day, when I land up at the cardiologist, he says, no, no, you need open heart surgery or bypass or whatever it is. And life can become very complicated. This is what happens with the mind also. In fact, it happens more with the mind than with the body. That is how we tend to neglect it. So let us work on that uh, thing. Keep these little tips in mind, which I showed you, those nine points, and work on them. Get back to us if you need any doubts or anything of that sort. And I will be meeting up with you next Saturday at 11 o'clock with this interesting topic, which Anis is going to put up and show you right now. Counseling versus other means of healing. Why counseling? A lot of people ask this, no? Why only counseling? Isn't there any other means? I do prayer and I feel better. I do this and I feel better. Yes, you can. We are not competing. So what is the difference? What is the effect? All that we will discuss next Saturday at 11 o'clock. See you. Bye-bye. Right, so see you next Saturday, this interesting topic. Take a look at that and also some other topics which are coming up. Right, so on the screen, you can look at the next set of topics which are coming up. So adults also can throw tantrums. <laughs> interesting topic. Do come for that. And like I said, the two talks that are happening, Helping Hand Talk on Thursday and Saturday Talk, both are happening in person. So you're most welcome. Come and attend. That is if you want to take up professional counseling without a psychology background. Yes. So next Saturday on 18th of June from 4 to 5.30, uh, you are most welcome to attend the free talk. How is a counselor different from a friend? That is the topic. Right. So see you. Thursday, Saturday, Saturday morning for FP Live, Saturday evening for our, th for our uh, free talk, right? Bye-bye, take care.